Hey guys, take a look at this lovely setup. This has been running for a nice 469.9 cycles. We produced over 892 tons of lumber. The excess lumber has been turned into ethanol and powered this whole setup. We kept the lovely bunny here alive for that long as well. Let's check bunny. Are you the first duplicate here or are you not? 458 cycles. Bunny survived for that long with this setup here. So let me explain what we did here. The whole idea behind this was to have a single geyser power an interesting setup. In this case, I just started with the cool slush geyser, checked the average output, in this case we have 1.3 kilograms per second in average, meaning including the dormancy periods. That means I built a setup that was laid out for 1 kilogram per second and used the excess to store a little bit more liquid and have the excess feed the Saturn critter traps. We still produce more than we actually need, so this should work if you have a geyser that is at least 1.1 kilograms per second. Now to the setup. The principle behind this is use the liquid, store the liquid, use the stored liquid to feed the arbor trees. The arbor trees then will produce lumber. The lumber will then used in the ethanol distiller to produce ethanol to feed the petroleum generator. Yes, the petroleum generator can also use ethanol. It produces a little bit of power. It produces more polluted water that we can store then. This is helpful because it is warmer than the water from the geyser. But not all the time because this is also cooled by the water incoming from the geyser. And then use the energy for the rest of our needs. We also need the carbon dioxide from this, but only very small increments to produce the oxygen in the base. We do need a lot of oxyferns while planted for this cause otherwise we would need clean water. This whole thing works on the premise of only using polluted water. No clean water needed at all. Maybe for the liquid lock but you can use any liquids that you have. Those are the basics on the left side. And here on the top right, we use 50 kilograms of polluted water per cycle, not second, per cycle, to feed the Saturn critter traps that we domesticated here in the hydroponic farm tiles, which are fed by the tiny bee tinies. You only need one bee tiny, you click move to, you basically drop it anywhere in this room. It will create a beta hive. The beta hive will spit out one bee tiny and or beta per cycle, producing 12,000 plant meat every 30 cycles. Since we do have five of those, we produce 60,000 kilocalories every 30 cycles. That is 2,000 kilocalories per cycle. Enough to feed exactly two duplicates, which is definitely enough to keep our bunny alive and even feed more duplicates in the process. Because I wanted to store this in infinite storages. I also included a little pickup system that does not allow manual pickup from the duplicant and just drops it in this infinite storage here. The infinite storage again is super cooled minus 42 degrees celsius and with that fresh forever and is cooled by the setup here in the middle. The setup in the middle is not cooled at all. It just uses the hydrogen here that is produced by the Saturn critter traps while digesting. Let's just wait for the daytime again. So it is daytime again. You can also see my, <laughs> my beta trap in action now, hopefully. Uh, technically, you need three of these traps to be safe that your duplicate can come in without getting stung by the beaters. If the beater flies over the sensor or this four tile area here, the doors will close and the duplicate is safe from the beater. This here is set to edibles, so let's just uh, deconstruct it, turn it to the side, hook it up again, build another one of these. Critter sensor set to below one critter, hook it up to the doors, wait for the beater to fly in, uh, edible, edible, here it is one trapped and then we can let the duplicate harvest those. Bunny is harvesting the plant meat from the Saturn critter trap. It will get dropped down, picked up by the auto sweeper, transported to the conveyor loader and then slowly transported down to the infinite storage. Once Bunny did that, the bee tinies will get trapped again and the Saturn critter trap will release around, how much was it? 25 kilograms per cycle of hydrogen which is a lot. We use this hydrogen in the gas pump. This is set to above one kilogram. We are at 255 kilograms per tile, by the way, and use this in this setup down here. We have 
two thermoregulators, one thermoregulator cooling down the infinite storage and one thermoregulator cooling down the beta hive as well as the metal tiles here. Technically our cool slush geyser keeps this at minus 10 degrees preventing the polluted water from freezing any further but sometimes in the dormancy this gets too warm we need to cool this down hence the thermoregulator doing the job. The thermoregulator itself is not cooled down we just use these radiant pipes here and these radiant pipes here to the right to basically use the hydrogen that flows through it burn it off with the hydrogen generator to cool down the whole room to under 100 degrees celsius. If the natural burning of the hydrogen is not enough this thermosensor tells the room if the room gets too hot above 100 degrees activate the hydrogen generator for 100 or 200 seconds um, 200 seconds and this should be enough by burning the hydrogen that is already in the pipes the hydrogen that comes from this room is pretty cold it should be enough to cool down the room again under 100 degrees no issue here i also have a automation setup for the cables that allows the room on top to be prioritized and only when everything is nice and cool and doesn't overheat then activate the pump activate the arcade cabinet and the exosuit forge. Suit forge of course is needed for the repair of the atmosuit docks which are needed to go through the vacuum inside of the hydrogen room and is provided by where is it here our thimble reed. The thimble reed uses the excess water from the arbor trees to provide the reed fiber needed for the repairs of the exosuits here. We do have a great hall here, not a toilet here, a nice nature reserve that the duplicate has to go through when they pass the rooms and a luxury barrack. How is this room kept its current temperature? Well, we added one of the liquid tabardizers here in the top left. The liquid tabardizer is controlled by the thermosensors, kept at below 30 degrees, then turn on. Same for the left one. And the piping is that the incoming liquid from the cool slush geyser here is first fed through this room here, cooling it down, heating up the liquid in the process. If it is still not hot enough, go through this area here where it is heated up again and then stored. In this case it is hot enough but sometimes it flows too fast. I don't have any stopping system here if it flows too fast but we do have another system which is the second loop here that goes around and around all the time and just heats up the whole room to a nice 32 degrees celsius meaning even if we fill cold liquid into the hydroponic farm tiles from the arbor tree we did not everything has a nice temperature then the whole room is warm enough for the arbor tree to keep on growing also important for the thimble reed which can only grow 22 to 37 celsius what we also need for this to work is pips they do not have to be domesticated because that only uses time from duplicant. Those are wild pips. I only put in four wild pips. Nothing more, nothing less. You need one pip per two trees. Why that? Because one pip produces 20 kilogram of dirt per cycle as seen here and one of the trees needs 10 kilogram of dirt per cycle. Meaning one pip can supply two trees. Two trees in itself can supply one ethanol distiller and one ethanol distiller produces 500 grams of ethanol per second. A petroleum generator can use 2 kilograms of petroleum or ethanol per second, meaning this thing can run at one fourth of its power. It would produce 2000, so one fourth of that is 500 watts. But since almost nothing runs all the time, this hasn't been an issue at all. What you need to do though to get this to work work is to supply it with the heated up water so you probably need to feed the liquid tabardizer with power for a longer time until the arbor trees until the arbor trees grow up produce lumber and you have the lumber powering this setup here in the top corner without this you need external power for this to run i do have auto supers here that supply all of the arbor trees with dirt kind of automatically but not fully because the dirt is um, often out of reach there is optimization for that if the dirt is on top it can be picked up this can be picked up this can be picked up this here can be picked up and this can be picked up but if it is below the duplicate has to do the task or you do not build any composters then you can pick up the dirt automatically but the composters are quite useful in this contraption because they recycle the polluted dirt from the outhouse and the polluted dirt that the ethanol distiller produces. You could also move the composters down here. 
I do have the plants here because the plants can grow in a range of 20 to 50 and are a good indicator if the room is too hot or too cold. This is just our outhouse with an integrated pump that could technically fill our Atmos suits but I did not use that anymore. I am using this pump here in the top left corner which has an integrated oxygen mechanical filter. If we have too much pressure here this will turn on, send the oxygen down the line and then fill the atmos suit docks. There are a few filters in between, I can show you that in the overlay later on, but for now that is the gist of it. Anything that we do not need, carbon dioxide and polluted oxygen for that case, will just be thrown out. So just delete that or put it into space, just throw it out. The carbon dioxide from this room will be put down here to the left and to the right, close to the oxyferns to produce the oxygen in this area. And I think that is basically it, so let me show you the overlays. This is the oxygen overlay, this is our power cable. Could you not game? These are the power cables. We have one setup here for the middle, the top right and the top left. And another setup from this here to power the recreation buildings, the suits and maybe the electric grill that is set to meet forever. If one of the pips dies we can use that meat. Temperature overlay, the gas overlay, how about the liquid overlay? Oh right, this here is also an Azure Fall, meaning this in itself is an infinite storage, which is why we do have over 5 tons here in this single tile. These are just set to above 800 and above 300, so we do not ever get rid of this liquid tile or these liquid tiles here and the gases stay in their place to create the Azure Fall and keep it working. This is the liquid overlay, let me quickly explain this to you. The liquid is delivered by the geyser. It is fed in equal parts to the top right where we want it cool and to the left. To the left it does not have priority. Priority does have this liquid pump because we, all, we always want this room to be pumped out. So this gets pumped out first, then the liquid from the geyser comes second. It will loop around a little bit, give off its coldness to this room, heat up the liquid in the pipes a little bit in the process, jump over this bridge, heat up the liquid further with the help of the liquid tepidizer and then store it here in this area. From then on it will get delivered to the plants here in the middle. It will get delivered first to the arbor trees and secondly to the thimble reed. The second loop, I have already shown you that, is just this one here. This is the heating loop looping around all the time, keeping this room at a nice 32-33 degrees Celsius. If there ever might be the time that you want to cool this down, just don't heat up your liquid that much and this will be cool in no time. You also have the heat producing composters, keep that in mind, but as I already shown you, this has been running for 469 cycles without any issues. This is the gas overlay, keep in mind, if we do have too much pressure here, I had over 10 kilograms, 20 kilograms of oxygen and carbon dioxide at one time, because I haven't limited the carbon dioxide output at first, which is why I added that later on. With the help of this atmosphere sensor, let me switch to daytime quickly. Oxygen and carbon dioxide levels are now controlled by this Atmo sensor which is just set to if below 1500 grams so 1.5 kilogram if that is the case for 100 seconds then activate the mini gas pump the mini gas pump will then send carbon dioxide downwards and giving the carbon dioxide to the oxyferns providing the base with more oxygen and this here is if we ever have too much oxygen or carbon dioxide and everything looks weird for example if the whole middle is carbon dioxide it will suck up the gases if above 2500 gram this is pretty high so you do will already have poppy drums and will transport it through this filter if oxygen place it inside of here, if not throw it out or if the base is already full throw it out as well. This here is the decor overlay, this here is the germ overlay because I do have disinfect on just to train the duplicant. You can see the duplicant is nice and germy. They do have food poisoning basically a lot of the time but that doesn't really matter at all. Food poisoning is not really deadly. YouTube might be a little bit slower, might be a little bit unhappy. Still doesn't matter. Does it drop? produces a lot of lumber 
get something to eat, gets heavy because can't play on the arcade, just don't worry about it. And you also have the buddy buds helping out with the germs. You could technically pretty easily build a, a wash slash shower slash better toilet room if you have clean water to your accessibility, but this is just based on polluted water so I did not use any clean water. This is the plant growth overlay. You also produce a tiny amount of solid nuclear waste because every time the beaters die they produce the solid nuclear waste. Not sure what you want to do with frozen solid nuclear waste or with the liquid stuff but there you go, there you have it. Next overlay is the room overlay, you already seen that. And then we do have the automation. The automation as you can see is super simple, nothing special. You've already seen this. This is just a, if there's an annoying beater that accidentally goes over these tiles, it will get trapped. This here is only if we have enough hydrogen, only then use the hydrogen. This here is if the room is too hot for 5 seconds, over 100 degree, then burn hydrogen for 200 seconds. This here tells the hydrogen to be cold enough. This here tells the hydrogen to be cold enough as well. This here says that only allow the power to go to the arcade cabinet and the exosuit forge and the grill if this here is cold enough. Only then will the power go to this cable and power everything. Before that it will not turn green. This here is basically no longer needed, but it once said if above 1500 gram, suck up the gas, check if there's oxygen with the gas filter and put it in the atmosuit dock. Everything else will just be dumped here. If these are full, this will stop, hence the gas filter and not a mechanical filter. More automation is here, already told you that. If below 1500 for 100 seconds, activate the mini gas pump to supply carbon dioxide to the plants. These are not automated at all. This here is automated, already told you that. And this here is set to below 30. The petroleum generator is automated by the smart battery, telling it to activate if the battery is below 70% of its threshold. Then the petroleum generator turns on until it gets to 100% again. And that's it with the whole automation for the thing. Most tasks are taken care of by our lovely bunny. And this here is the conveyor rail setup. We do pick up the lumber here. This is set to allow manual use in case that these here are not able to grab the lumber. The lumber is then dropped in this top room after cycling around a little bit, heating up the top room. The um, very hot polluted dirt that is produced by this here, there it is, 84 degrees Celsius, is taken directly, put into this and dropped down because we actually do want the heat in the lower room. And the automation for the right one is just anything that is in here that is edible and is not solid nuclear waste. Pick it up, put it on the conveyor and drop it down here. Sadly we do need two of those because the room is quite big and we want to grab the Saturn Critter Trap automatically and not with a duplicate. If we grab the stuff with a duplicate we can create an infinite loop where the duplicate is running back and forth just to store the plant meat which is super annoying. The only thing that can happen here is that the dupe does not eat all of the plant meat at the same time. They leave a little bit on the floor and it will rot over time but since this also... How fast does this rot? Four, four cycles there's still the chance that someone eats it. And if it does rot, we will throw it into the composter. And that's it with the setup. Hope you enjoyed it. You will get a lot of food out of this, more than a single duplicate can need. Basically double that. You get solid nuclear waste for some reason, <laughs> if you ever need that. You get a lot and a lot of carbon dioxide if you need that for your slickster farms. You get a lot of lumber because you're not actually using it in this setup. You will get an excess of dirt, maybe even oxygen, a little bit of reed fiber, a semi-happy bunny and the occasional barbecue. Hope you enjoyed this and hope to see you in the next one. Love you guys and Luma out.